Uh, okay, g'day all. Uh, welcome to another C++ tutorial. So we're just about to tackle about the the final uh, big uh, section of C++ before, you know, we've, we've pretty much covered uh, the basics of C++ anyway. Uh, and the topic is inheritance and uh, polymorphism. Uh, so there's a few different ways that we could approach this topic. You know, there's a million and one different ways of, of describing what inheritance is in a programming language. Um, and I think what we might do is, first of all, have a look at basically what programmers were trying to model when they invented this, um, you know, programming style, this this uh, object-oriented programming. What were they trying to model when they, uh, yeah, added inheritance to programming languages? And then second, we can have a look at coding in C++ and see how it actually works in C++. Um, okay, so there's a few different meanings for the word inheritance. There's, um, you can get money when somebody, you know, a relative dies. Uh, that's not what we're talking about here. That's not what we're talking about at all. Uh, we're talking about biological inheritance. Uh, that's basically what we're trying to model with uh, inheritance. And uh, when I say trying to model, it's, it's, you know, it's a pretty loose term, trying to model. Uh, why don't you just model instead of trying? <laughs> uh, the real objective of inheritance in programming languages is not actually to model anything in the end. Uh, the real objective is just to save typing. Um, it's, it's easy to say that programmers are lazy, um, and, you know, in a way, I guess that's, that's probably true, but I'd say more than anything, uh, what programmers are is efficient. Uh, so inheritance is all about saving typing and being an efficient programmer. Okay, one way to think of inheritance in, uh, in programming and in real life as well is um, the word is in English, is. Uh, so is is a particularly interesting word in English, possibly the most interesting of all. Uh, it, it conjugates really weirdly. It's... Um, you know, I am, you are, it is, um, the am, are, and is, they're all the same word. Anyway, we're not doing grammar. Uh, when we describe a real-life object to someone, what we can say is um, things that it has, we can say what the object does or can do, and we can say what the object is. And these three words are extremely important. They actually form the backbone of English. I don't know if you've ever looked into um, how, this, how this English language works, but it's absolutely fascinating study, I tell you. Um, and these three words really form the backbone of English. And uh, object-oriented programming is, coincidentally, uh, pretty much modelled around those three words. So we can say that a class's member variables are what it has. Uh, you know, a, a, an object might have an integer that it can increment or decrement or add things to. Uh, a class's member functions are what it does. So the member functions are just things that the class can do to its variables. And finally, a class's inheritance is what it is. So if, if you know, you've got a parent class, uh, you might say that another class is related to that class. You might say that it is the same sort of thing, uh, which is basically what we're talking about here today. That's inheritance. Um, okay, so just a little bit more about biological inheritance. Uh, if you had to describe a bee to somebody, maybe somebody hasn't found a bee before. <laughs> Go and find a bee. Look, if you've never seen one, go and find one. They're just, they're great, really. Fantastic little furry critters. Uh, but if, if the person that you were describing a bee to uh, already knew of other insects, then it'd be super, super simple to say what a bee is to them. You'd just say, well, a bee is a flying insect. It's a little insect and it flies around and it collects honey and uh, pollen and all sorts of weird things. They kind of do their own thing, but uh, they're just gold in the end. Um, so if, if you wanted to describe an unknown insect to somebody, you could just say it's an insect and then describe some specific things about them. Uh, so over here I've got just a little family tree drawn up. Uh, it's, you know, pretty general, pretty random too. It's arbitrary in the end. Uh, I start up here with living things. And underneath that I've got animals. And animals possess voluntary movement. But this arrow just here indicates that animals are a living thing. So anything that living things can do, uh, animals can do as well, and anything that living things have, uh, animals would have as well. At the moment, I mean, the, the way that I've drawn the diagram, living things don't have anything, or they can't do anything. Uh, but you could fill that out as needed. Uh, anyway, underneath animals, I've got insects, and insects are a particular type of animal. They're a, a, a class, I think. I think it's a class, or an order, or a phylum, or something. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but all insects have six legs and eyes. Uh, they've got three body parts, and they've got a chitinous exoskeleton. Uh, so you might put that into your insects class. And what's interesting is that because insects are animals, and because animals uh, possess voluntary movement, 
then insects inherit that as well. So insects can move around of their own accord, apparently. I mean, I don't want to get into the physics of it. <laughs> Maybe there's no free will at all. I mean, who knows? Uh, it's not the time or place to discuss that. Uh, anyway, moving down further along the uh, inheritance hierarchy, we finally come to bees. Now, bees are a type of insect. That's why I've drawn the arrow like that. Bees are a type of insect, which means that bees have six legs and eyes, they have three body parts, they have a chitinous exoskeleton, and they can move voluntarily. They inherited that from animals. Um, but bees, on top of that, bees are a bit more specific. So bees also make honey, and they live in a hive, and they can fly. Yeah, so not all insects can do those things. Not all insects can make honey, so there'd be no real point in putting make honey into the insects class. Um, yeah, but I'm sure you can see the um, basic gist of what I'm getting at here. Yeah, just basic biological inheritance. You could go into a lot more details if you're a biologist. Uh, okay, so moving along, what would be the purpose of describing things like this? Well, as we said before, uh, it's really, really easy to describe a new uh, insect to somebody. So maybe you want to describe a bagworm. Well, you don't have to type out, uh, you know, six legs and eyes, three body parts, chitinous exoskeleton, voluntary movement. All you've got to say when you add bagworm to your little knowledge base is you say, well, a bagworm is an insect. And it automatically inherits all of those things. So whatever people know uh, to be an insect, if you say to them uh, a bagworm or a doodle bug uh, is an insect, then they'll just assume that it can do all of the things that an insect can do. So that's a really big benefit. We've already saved a lot of typing there uh, with that little inheritance there of uh, six legs and eyes and that sort of thing. And uh, we only have to describe the specifics for the new insects that we add. But the other bonus is that as soon as we add something to one of these parent classes, these classes above are called parent classes, uh, as soon as we add something to one of these parents, every class that inherits from that parent also gets the same thing. So if, if for example, we added antennas, to insects, since all insects have antennas, but we just forgot to program that at the start. Uh, what? Program? We're not programming yet. Uh, anyway, if we add antennas to the insects class, then everything that inherits from that class uh, also gets antennas. So bagworms get antennas, uh, bees get antennas, and doodlebugs get antennas. And that's, that's a big, big plus. That saved us a lot of typing. Instead of typing out you know, changes to three classes, we only have to change the parent class. Um, so I think before we get into, yeah, let me just go previous. Uh, before we get into coding, I should just mention that the the lower classes here are called child classes or inherited classes, and the higher classes are called parent classes. Yeah, so you might say that the insect class is the parent to the doodlebug class, or conversely, uh, you might say that the doodlebug class is inherited from or is the child class of the insect class. Okay, that's good. So we're going to get stuck into how this works in C++ now, but I might just pause it because I think I'll mess up. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, I'm back again uh, in C++, uh, Visual Studio 2012. Um, I, could, I could probably upgrade to 2013, but I'm, I'm not going to. Uh, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, living thing. Okay, so I'm going to make it just a parent class here, just like our slides, called living thing. Uh, it's got nothing at all in it, just like our slides, uh, but you could add different things to that as we'll show in, uh, in just a little bit. Uh, okay, so that's the living thing class. We could, if we want, down here in main, uh, we could create an object of type living thing. Yeah, living thing T, just like that. Uh, there you go, that would make a brand new living thing object. Um, okay, so if we want to inherit from the living thing class, or in other words, if we want to make a class that's the child to the parent living thing class, uh, we might want to make an animal class, and you do the uh, actual inheritance just like this, living thing. Yeah, just like that. Now our parent class, or sorry, our animal class had the ability to move voluntarily, so I'll just put move there. I might just make it empty. Well, I might actually just do... Uh, see out the animal moved what animal <laughs> the animal moved <laughs> like the dead eyes open the dead eye. okay get over it um, living thing is the parent class to the animal class and you can tell that because there's a colon after the child class's name that's animal and that's followed by public and then the name of the parent class 
So at the moment, living thing doesn't actually have anything to inherit, but you know, if it did, we'd inherit everything into the animal class. And the public just here is um, a little bit interesting. It's it's a little bit unnecessary in in my mind. But what it means is that anything that's public in the living thing class uh, should also be made public in the animal class. Uh, you can, if you want, do private, and that would mean that things up here, like if you had maybe public and then int i, uh, for example. So living things have an integer i now, which the animal class is inheriting, uh, but that that i in the animal class is private. Yeah, so that's what that little specifier there means, that public or private. So we can have a bit of an example of that. If I have um, a living thing l, just a brand new living thing, and we say l dot i equals 10, that's perfectly fine because in living thing, in the living thing class, the i integer is public. But if I make an animal, uh, animal a, and I try and change the i of that, It'll tell me it's private. Yeah, there you go. So it's private in the animal class because of that word just there. But, you know, it's more often than not you just want to do that and uh, inherit everything that's public from living thing or the parent class as uh, public in the child class. Okay, let's move on. So we've got our living thing parent and we've got our uh, animal child class. Let's go down a bit further and make an insect class. So class uh, insect and the insects class parent is the animal class. Oops, I better put public. Just like that. Uh, public. And insects have, I think, maybe int legs and int eyes. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I think we did give them a few other abilities, a, 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 a chitinous exoskeleton or whatever, but it's not really relevant. Uh, to anything at all. Uh, so the the insect class I've just made here inherits from the animal class, which inherits from the living thing class. So anything that was in the living thing class would also be in the insect class, and anything in the animal class is uh, yeah in the insect class as well. So let's have a bit of a test. Let's see if we can make an insect and set its leg number to six. Let's go. Um, I'm going to say insect insect ant. And ant dot legs equals six. And ant dot eyes equals six as well. Insects have six eyes and six legs, unless by chance they've uh, lost the battle. Uh, yeah, no worries. So we can set the legs and the eyes of the insect class. But what's interesting is because insects are a type of animal, because it inherits from the animal class, uh, we can also call this move method even though we never specified it in the insect class. So let's have a look. Um, ant.move. There you go. If I just put a get down here, uh, we should see... There you go, the animal moved. Yeah, fair enough. All right, so moving down even further, we might make a, another class called B. And B inherits from the insect class, insecty. <laughs> Uh, public and bees have another few abilities. They can make honey, which I might just say is uh, see out. Um, the bee makes honey. Handle, and they can also fly. Let's go void and um, fly, and we'll just go see out and then like a, an industrious kind of sound. Buzz, buzz, and all. Uh, there we go. So now we've got bees, which inherit from the insect class, which inherits from the animal class, which inherits from living things. And uh, I'm sure you can see where this is going. Let's make ourselves a bee object. Um, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it B. <laughs> Uh, just to confuse myself, so this B object just here is a B, would you believe it? Uh, let's set his eyes equals 6. Um, let's set his legs equals 6 as well. Um, so note that I didn't actually have to type that a B has eyes and legs in the B's class because the B inherits from the insect class, and the insect has those things. Um, Alright, so once our B's got a few eyes and legs, we should probably give him wings as well. Let's say here... Um, int wings. Yeah, bees have wings. 
Um, let's set our bees wing count to two. They might have four, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, okay, and what we can also do with our new bee is uh, we can tell him to fly, fly bee, or we can tell him to make honey, no worries, or we can tell him to move. And uh, I didn't tell the, um, you know, I didn't retype the uh, move method for the B class because it inherited it all the way from animal. No worries. So what we should see here is something like buzz, buzz, and then the bee makes honey, and then the animal moved. Let's have a look. Easy as that. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so that's about all I wanted to say on basic inheritance. Actually, before we go, I should mention... Um, private and protected, uh, just so, don't, so I don't have to go through it next time. Um, anything that's private in a parent class, the child class can't access. Uh, so for instance, if we make these um, legs and eyes uh, private, which is the default, so I didn't actually have to type private. If we make the uh, integers legs and eyes in the insect class, if we make them private, then when the bee inherits from the insect class, uh, it won't be able to access those legs and eyes. Let's have a look. Um, okay, so b dot legs equals twenty. There you go. Yeah, so the legs uh, is private uh, at the moment. Um, and the other one that you can do, the other one, there's uh, there's public, which means that the child classes and you know all external methods and whatever can access it. Uh, private means that nothing can access it except for the class itself, so insect in this example. Uh, but the other one is sort of between the two, and it's protected. Hold on a second, my dog is attacking someone. Uh, okay, all good. So that they survived. Um, protected means sort of in between public and private. Uh, what it means is that. External uh, methods can't access the legs and eyes, or these these protected member variables, but it means that inherited uh, child classes can access them. So, for instance, if we had another method down here um, called maybe walk or something like that, uh, void walk, uh, just like that. And we might want to say that when a bee walks, it accidentally loses one of its legs. Well, we could easily go legs minus minus, uh, just like that, in the walk method of bee. Now, bee is the child class of insect, but it can access those legs or that legs member variable because it's protected. If that was private, uh, like before, then even the child class can't access it. Look at that, legs is, uh, is private, so you can't access it. Um, so... In summary, public means that anything can access it, child classes or, you know, irrelevant or, or unrelated member, uh, unrelated methods. Private means that nothing can access it except for the class itself that it's defined in. And protected means that, well, we should do this little test here, protected, uh, means that child classes can access those variables, but external uh, methods can't. Uh, so, for example, down here, well, you can see it's it's there already. So uh, I marked uh, legs as protected in the, was it animal class? In the insect class. Um, so the main method, which is, you know, external to the bee class, the main method can't change legs, uh, but it's protected. So the child class, uh, bee, in other words, can. Anyway, I hope that's not too confusing. Uh, it gets a lot more powerful when you uh, look at uh, polymorphism, which I think we'll do next time. All right, cheers all. See ya.